Hello and thanks for joining us again. Montgomery County is a community of inclusion and compassion, but unfortunately, we're more frequently witnessing disturbing incidents of intolerance, hate, and intimidation. This past weekend, we saw anti-Semitic flyers distributed in the Kensington area, falsely linking the ancestors of our Jewish community to slavery. Last week, students at three schools were punished for drawing swastikas on desks. Last month, there was an anti-Semitic graffiti spray painted outside a high school in Bethesda, and some teachers were sent anonymous and disturbing letters. In the fall, we dealt with more anti-Semitic messages on bus stops and fences near the Bethesda trolley trail. Police are still investigating those incidents and a new $5,000 reward was recently established by the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington and the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington for information that leads to an arrest and conviction. Anyone with information about these crimes can call Crime Solvers at Montgomery County at 1-866-411-TIPS. And it's not just anti-Semitic incidents of hate. We've had vandalisms at historic black churches in Bethesda, hate crimes against our AAPI community, as well as protests from the Proud Boys trying to intimidate our LGBTQ plus community. There is no easy way to put an end to these acts of hatred. I wish there were, but we're actively working with police and the community and other partners to solve and prevent this behavior. And we will continue to be very clear that this behavior is unacceptable. For years, our community has been dealing with the scourge of opioids. We have taken some actions to help. Emergency anti-overdose solutions are now easy to find on police officers, firefighters, and other life service, so they aren't helpless when they encounter an overuse of drugs. Unfortunately, they're seeing more young lives put in jeopardy because of fentanyl. Earlier this month, a 15-year-old overdosed and died. It's one of eight recent overdose deaths in Montgomery County. The Montgomery County Fire Department has reported that an additional 38 people would have been killed since December if were not for the life-saving naloxone, also known as Narcan. Opioid misuse and overdoses has been a major public health problem in our county for several years. But more recently, the use of fentanyl and pills and the younger age of those misusing it is very concerning. Last year, youth overdoses in Montgomery County alone increased 77%. Fentanyl is a synthetic drug intended to mimic opioids, and it's pressed into pill form so it looks like many other drugs. Users taking the pills may not realize the danger they're putting themselves in. Nationally, 71% of adolescent overdose deaths in 2021 involve fentanyl. The more kids experiment with drugs, the greater the risk posed by the presence of fentanyl in the drug market. This Saturday at Clarksburg High School, MCPS is hosting a fentanyl awareness forum for families helping give them the tools for prevention and helping protect their children. It is free and will take place from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. in the school cafeteria. This forum will also be live streamed on the MCPS homepage. Make it a priority to talk to your kids about dangers of drugs like fentanyl. Go to our website, knowtherisksmc.org for information and resources. Since September, our hospitals in our area have been dealing with the triple threat of RSV, flu, and COVID-19. It has put constant pressure on our hospitals for many weeks, straining capacity and prompting a warning from health experts to consider treating mild cases of COVID through your doctor and avoiding the hospital. This week, our hospitals remain nearly full, but our COVID-19 counts are showing signs of regression, as RSV and flu cases did before them. That may make it seem like we're out of the woods, but we're not yet. The percentage of hospital beds devoted to COVID patients remains elevated and keeps our community level status at medium. Safety measures are as important as ever. Vaccines and boosters are still the best way to protect yourself and your family. Demand for these shots continues to drop significantly, even though data shows a far lower percentage of breakthrough cases with the new bivalent boosters that were introduced in September. Voluntary face mask use in indoor public places is strongly recommended. Face masks must be worn in healthcare and congregate sites like shelters and nursing homes. Washing your hands frequently and staying home if you're sick are always ways to help stop the spread of disease. Emergency room activity is still high 
and health experts recommend only using the ER for life-threatening issues until COVID recedes even more. Did you know that commuters using public transportation can save up to four times the cost and cut greenhouse gas emissions by half as compared to using a personal car? The Fair Share program allows employees to work with their employers to lower the cost of commuting by using public transportation. The Internal Revenue Service will allow contribution limits to increase from $280 to $300 per month. The money can be used to pay for transit passes, van pool fares, and other 2023 public transportation expenses. To take advantage of pre-tax savings, employees and employers must both get on board with the Commuting Benefits Program. Employers pay for the first $25 of a participating commuter's expense, then the county will cover up to $300 in monthly travel expenses. The full subsidy could be as high as $3,600 per year per employee. There's a maximum payout of $40,000 to each business per year. The money can be used by commuters using a ride-on bus, metro bus, metro rail, or mark train. There are also ways this program to help with metro parking expenses. The idea is to lower the cost of commuting while taking cars off the road and to help the environment. For questions about taking advantage of the program, go to montgomerycountymd.gov slash D-O-T and search for Fair Share. This week, Montgomery County will host the 43rd Annual Women's Legislative Briefing. It will be held virtually from 12.30 to 5 on January 29th. There's an opportunity to update the public on Montgomery County's legislative proposals before the local, state, and national legislative bodies that address issues of specific concern to women. We'll focus on how important advocacy is in, in protecting our democracy. This year's theme, Empowered Women Defend Democracy, is crucial as we encourage civic action in order to elect leaders who represent solutions for issues affecting women and our girls. Compared to other high-income countries, the U.S. has a much lower percentage of women elected to government. However, evidence shows that women who are elected to public office have different priorities and see very different results than their male counterparts. Women introduce many more bills on health care, education, and child care than men do. We know that empowered women can change laws, policies, and even those who represent us in office. This year, the Montgomery County Council has its first female majority, and I'm excited to work with these historic and trailblazing leaders. Find out how to sign up for this event by visiting the Commission for Women's website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash CFW. Finally, I want to remind everyone that on Friday, we'll have a grand reopening of our upgraded Oak Barrel and Vine store in the Montrose Crossing Shopping Center. The alcohol beverage services store in Rockville Pike has been shut down for months for this redesign. It will now reopen with more shelf space, a dedicated tasting area, and a better experience for customers. Our county's ABS generates about 30 to $35 million of revenue annually for the taxpayers. Upgrading these stores is a great way to increase revenue and customer satisfaction. One Oak Barrel and Vine store is already open in Cabin John, and a third is under construction in Gaithersburg. Congratulations to ABS employees and customers on this good news that we can all say cheers to. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening, and tune in again next week.